Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third dimension. The topic for today is brick masonry and its inspection. This is the first video from our inspection series that we are starting. In this series, we are going to talk about all the inspection methods and procedures and all the checklists which every site engineer and site supervisor has to have so that he can make sure that the contractor's work on site is up to the mark. So our first topic is brick masonry and its inspection. How do we make sure that the brick work which is done on site is good enough? It's up to the mark. So the first thing is, what exactly is brick masonry and how important it is in a structural building? Brick masonry is a structural element or a system in which the bricks are placed in a systematic manner and the joints are filled with mortar to form a solid structure. Similarly, these brick masonry structures are used in both load-bearing and, load and non-load-bearing walls. Brick masonry construction has to be up to the mark so that the wall's load-bearing capacity can be sustained and it can be built up. The quality of bricks can be ensured by proper workmanship and inspection. And that's when the inspection checklists that we're talking about comes into the scene. There are a total of eight inspection points that we're going to talk about. At number one, we have soaking of the bricks. Soaking of the bricks prior to its usage is an extremely important activity and it significantly contributes to the strength of the brickwork. When bricks are soaked into clean water, they get saturated and the air particles, dust or dirt within them gets removed. Thus, when these soaked bricks are used on site, they do not absorb any moisture from the mortar that is applied onto them, which, which means that the mortar would have enough moisture to complete its hydration process and to gain its full strength. Generally, a suitable soaking period is considered 12 hours, but again, it depends. For example, if large quantities of bricks are involved, then you cannot soak them at the same time. So then spraying water over them is another second method which is considered suitable. So water has to be sprayed over the pile of bricks at small intervals for a period of five to eight hours. So if the bricks are less, then soak them all together. But if they're in large quantities, then you can just spray water over them. And of course, that has to be clean water. At number two, we have maintaining the wet surface area of the brickwork. 10 minutes before starting the brickwork, the surface of the bricks has to be wetted. This would make sure that a good bond is made between the old surface and the new course of brickwork that is going to be laid. This would also make sure that the mortar which is applied between the layers is properly bonded and its strength is fully obtained. At number three, we have proper horizontal first bed course. The first bed course is the most important layer of a brick wall. You have to make sure that it is perfectly aligned on its horizontal and vertical axis. The surface below the bed course must also be filled with mortar and evened out. The bed course must be in perfect horizontal level and it must be carefully watched. At number four, we have proper mortar mix proportions. The mortar used should be properly mixed and the ratios of cement, sand, fly ash, lime and water should be done right. Similarly, the ratios of the mortar used should be around one ratio four, five or six. And these three are considered the most suitable ones for brickwork. At the same time, the water cement ratio has to be around 0.5 so that the workability of the mortar is suitable enough and a strong bond is made. The next inspection point is proper lap and vertical joints. The joints that are parallel to the bed course are termed as lap joint, and the joints that are perpendicular to the bed course are vertical joints. These joints should be continuously provided and properly done. 
because they significantly affect the overall stability and strength of the brick wall. The next point is spirit level and plumb bobs check-in. At every 10 bricks placed either horizontally or vertically, a spirit level and a plumb bob should be used. The horizontal level should be checked using a spirit level and the vertical level should be checked by using a plumb bob. These checks would make sure that a horizontally and vertically aligned wall is prepared, which again affects the stability and strength of the overall structure. The next point is the racking joints of the brick masonry. Every brick surface which has to be plastered later on should be racked. Racking the joints to a depth of 1 to 1.5 centimeters is considered suitable. And lastly, we have curing of the brick masonry. Curing is one of the most important activities in the construction process. Generally, the brick masonry is cured at regular intervals by spraying it with water and clean water, not water that is salty or has any other matter in it. Depending on the atmospheric humidity, minimum three times a day is considered suitable. So before plastering, the brickwork is cured for a minimum of 10 days and after plastering, another seven days is considered enough. These were the eight inspection checkpoints which every supervisor has to keep in mind when checking brick masonry on site. We are going to be back with another video in which we are going to inspect another activity of the construction site. Thank you.